Welcome to the Grow Your Practice podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Chad Madden, owner of Madden Physical Therapy and Breakthrough. Join me each week as we dive into the best practices, systems, principles, tips, and tricks to help you grow your private practice. Hey everybody, Chad Madden here with the Grow Your Practice podcast. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about a new checklist that we've published here at Breakthrough recently, and it's called the Profitability Checklist. And in this episode, I'm going to be walking through the seven, we'll call it seven and a half items that you should be thinking about as you are looking at profitability for your practice here in 2023. The reason that we put this checklist together is, as you know, reimbursements are going down, they're declining. Uh, This has been happening for five years or so. Costs of doing business, of delivering care are uh, going up and they're going up pretty dramatically. And the job market, it's been tough to hire, uh, not only for clinicians, but other positions across the board. And in the end, the result of that is that we have razor thin margins. And I know many practice owners uh, I've seen now in a few of our groups, e- even though it's prohibited owners posting, hey, I'm looking to hang out my goniometer or looking to hang up, um, you know, retire my hand, something along those lines, really looking to uh, step back. They, they're they fed up and they've had enough and it is tough to survive right now. So there is a systematic, a, let's call it a scientific way that you can think through the assets that you have in your practice and how you can get more out of it, how you can get more efficient. And you and I, as therapists, as clinicians, we we tend not to want to look at this uh, often, right? We're better in the clinic than we are working on our business. We're typically better working in our business than on our business. Um, Research shows that about half of the market, the private practice market, is really solopreneurs, right? So this isn't something where we have a ton of business acumen um, across the board. So it is a good way for us to think about if we are an owner, how can we keep our doors open? Because obviously the practice that, you know, is at 10% or lower, which is kind of the Mendoza line in terms of profit margin is in significantly worse shape if... Uh, clinicians walking out the door to take a higher paying job, or if, uh, you know, if they're trying to hire, if they're trying to expand, if they're trying to buy market share or anything like that. In fact, Greg Crabtree in his book, uh, Simple Numbers, Big Profits, talks specifically about this, that in any service-based business, anytime we dip below about 10% in profit margin, we're on very thin ice and we're in jeopardy, the, the slightest little speed bump in business um, can literally shut our doors. So we want to avoid that, right? We want to get to a safer place of, you know, 15, 20, 25% uh, profit margins, significantly safer, where we can compete with um, our competitors in the job market, where we can offer, you know, attractive career paths and career leaders to our team members uh, while giving them benefits, et cetera. You know, we can weather the storm if it's another 4% Medicare cut or something along those lines. So this is super important for uh, the really the, the lifeblood of your practice, the survival of your practice, the viability. Um, so let's get started. Uh, <clears throat> the first one that we're going to talk about is filling your schedule, right? So you have, as of, if you're a practice owner today, you have likely either yourself and or other clinicians that you're already paying for. And, um, you know, the, this has been brought up, I've debated this a few times, um, nationally. And typically what people will say is something around costs will scale, right? Filling schedules is a very easy way just to, um, if you are not busy, let's say you're 80% of your schedules are full. And let's say you have three clinicians in the example, and your expectation is that a therapist, you know, on 40, 45 minute treatment slots can see 50 visits in a week. So your capacity is 150 visits in a week. If you're seeing 80% of that or 120 visits in a week, so 120 into 150 is about 80% or exactly 80%, then And let's say you did that last month. Well, if you would go back and add in any visits at all, so instead of 120, let's say you saw 140, 
and each visit is worth $90 per visit to your practice, then that would be an extra 20 times 90 or $1,800 in your practice. You won't have to pay more. You've already paid for the salaries. You've already paid for you know, your employment costs, your space costs, et cetera. So costs do not scale and you would essentially have $1,800 extra in um, profitability and margin. So number one is filling your schedules. Number two is filling space. If you can hire clinicians and I've talked with a lot of owners, you know, they have 3000 square feet and they only have, you know, they're seeing a hundred visits a week when the capacity for that space might be 300 visits a week. So anytime, and this is, so right now I'm a practice owner, we have seven locations. It's, this is really how exactly how we think of it. We think first, fill the schedules for the existing clinicians. The next thing we do is we fill the space. So if we have 3,000 square feet, so we want to get to 300 visits a week as quickly as possible. If we have 5,000 square feet, then it's 500 visits a week. If we have 1,000 square feet, then it's 100 visits a week. You get the idea. So anytime that we have unfilled schedules or underutilized space, that is really uh can be the beginning of a death spiral in terms of our, it, it, it's a basically a black hole for profitability, I think is how uh, Bob Kowalik put it. But you get the idea. Fill schedules, fill space. We think of it in that order. That's number one and two on our checklist here. Next up is we want to build a wait list. The reason behind this is if we can create enough demand, that gives us options, right? If we have a waiting list where it takes us, you know, if we create so much demand for our services that we have a three or a six week waiting list for people to get in for an eval, then what that does is that gives us options for four through seven here, right? So yes, we filled the schedules and we filled them so well that people can't get in within 24 hours. Now, if you're as old as I am and you've been in practice for 20, 30, 40 years, you know that one of a, a very common marketplace differentiator, but everybody's doing it, so it's not really a differentiator, is getting an appointment within 24 hours. I will say that, you know, if you have another medical issue, let's say you wanted to see an orthopedic specialist or a gastroenterologist or somebody like that, and you wanted to see the best in your area or in your region, and you got an appointment within 24 hours, you might have a little red flag go, right? You would raise your eyebrow a little bit that, you know, why aren't they busy? Yes, I'm thankful I can get in, but I want somebody that's in demand. And it's the same thing here. A, a, a waiting list, our industry right now, many owners are treating it as a bad thing, right? Because we can't fulfill on that getting people in within 24 hours. That is certainly nice if that's your differentiator. Most of the practices that I've talked with that is how they're trying to separate themselves. I don't think it's a real differentiator. I think it's um, something that really stemmed from orthopedic uh, POPs practices. That is, you know, one of their, uh, that's something that they've sold their patients to is we can get you in right away. However, I've always kind of taken the opposite, right? Uh, <clears throat> the, the counterpoint to that, which is we're going to create so much demand for our services that people are willing to wait to get in. So once again, once you have a waiting list, once you've built up enough demand for your services, pent up demand, that gives you options for the next four points that we're gonna talk about. Number four is adding a cash pay service. So another way to think about this is if you've already invested in marketing, in grabbing people's attention, whether it's cold market or your past patient list or referrals or whatever it might be, and you've put that effort in and that patient's coming through, is there anything else that you could add to their services to continue to serve them? So some of the classics are, you know, supplements, dry needling, personal training, small group fitness, um, massage therapy, laser light. You know, we have a wonderful relationship with light force and we personally use light force, uh, 40 watt, the high wattage laser in our clinic, shockwave, you know, red light therapy, uh, we're exploring, you know, hyperbaric, other, basically there are lots of other ways that you can serve the patients that you have who are coming through. So think about that. And the nice thing is, is that many of those services that were mentioned, um, depending on your practice act and depending on the relationships that you have with local insurers, 
they're likely cash services. So, you know, when I'm talking with our partners here and my own private practice, the one thing, you know, that we recently brought up is, well, you know, if we're <clears throat> so reliant on the insurance company and the insurance companies are it, historically decreasing our revenue, especially relative to inflation and the cost of doing business, why would we go and try to add more services that are insurance-based reliant? Why not look at cash first, where it's reliant on the patient and us attracting that patient, not relying on what the insurance tells us our marketplace value is? So adding a cash pay service can be a very viable way We've worked with lots of owners. You know, I can remember in the very beginning when we started five or six years ago with the Life Force relationship, owners doing, you know, 15K plus in their very first month. And I know uh, Tony Sear, who you've heard from a few times now, uh, shared that, you know, he did over $220,000 in a single year in cash pay laser sales. Number five is attract more of your best payers. So if you, laid out your payers and at the bottom of the list you had your lowest payers so you know somebody who's paying you 50 60 70 dollars capped per visit right they would be at the bottom of the list um and then at the top of the list are your best payers would it not be great so imagine this if a hundred percent or even 90 percent 80 percent of the patients that you saw in your clinic were your best payer so let's say you're best payer is insurance company a right and so insurance company a pays you 120 dollars uh per visit and that's on a, a four unit visit and insurance company z pays you 50 dollars a visit regardless of what you do it's a capped visit now <clears throat> if you have the normal a normal diversified payer mix and you're worried about losing referral sources, which is the number one thing that commonly gets in the way, you're going to be impeded and pretty much limited by what that lowest payer is, right? Because you're losing money every time that somebody walks through that has that insurance. However, if you had a waiting list, then what you could do is focus on attracting more of your best payers, which is number five, right? And a quick, easy way to think about that would be you know, in our example, insurance company A at $120 a visit, I would want to know who are the top 10 employers in my area who offer insurance A to their employees, right? And I would seek out and we do seek out to create relationships with those employers. And that segues nicely into point number six here, which is we want to drop our lowest payer. So if we create enough demand, what we can start to do is drop our lowest payer or payers and focus more on seeing more of our best payers, right? Uh, it kind of sounds like a crazy concept because the industry standard is that we want to see everybody and something around, you know, not losing a referral source because somebody couldn't get in. But that methodology, that paradigm has got us in a lot of trouble because now we have, we feel paralyzed that we can't drop a lowest payer, that we can't, we have no uh, determinate self determination over what our, our value is in the marketplace and that's gotten us in a lot of trouble that has resulted in uh, declining value within the marketplace so number five and number six were getting more attracting more of your best payer and then dropping your lowest payer and then number seven here is renegotiating rates so <clears throat> the common thing that gets in the way here is most practice owners think that they're too small why would the insurance company listen to me they try to talk with somebody i know what I would do in the past is, you know, I would, uh, let's call it insurance company B. They were selling me insurance for my employees, yet dropping our rate of reimbursement um, for, the, you know, as a provider. And <clears throat> when I was renegotiating, as, you know, to purchase their insurance for the employees as a benefit, I brought this up and I was basically, you know, blown off. It, it was, and, I was given no attention at all. And the thing that came up is, yeah, we'll, we'll try, we'll go to the renegotiation department. I never heard a thing, uh, very poor follow-up on my end, to be honest as well. So I'll take responsibility for that. But in the end, um, I just dismissed it as I'm too small. They're not going to pay attention to me. Why would insurance company B want to renegotiate 
with me? Well, there is hope. And again, practice owner has shared this story, Tony Sear, and exactly what he did in his practice. And to give you an idea, uh, Tony is about a $2.8 million revenue per year. And he's in Florida in a very competitive market. And he was able to go through and increase his reimbursement rates by uh, you know, 10, 15, 20% in some cases. I think one insurance company gave him uh, three scheduled 10% increases um, annually in consecutive years. So 10% this year, 10% next year, 10% the following year, which is pretty crazy. And it gives a lot of us hope. So that is something else that you could do to increase your uh, revenue per visit. And the final one, which is our half that I'll give you here, is along the lines of uh, schedule efficiency. So this is the one that most of the market is talking about. I threw it in here because if you're not thinking about it, uh, you definitely should. I, I would say it's the most common one that I hear in terms of owners uh, thinking about <clears throat> increasing their profitability is well, instead of one hour appointments or 75 minute appointments, we're going to go back to a 45 or 40, or I've heard one practice do 38 minute appointments, right? To max, uh, to maximize their, their billing and, you know, make sure they're not leaving money on the table. We've also talked along those same lines with, you've heard from Mary DeLong with BCMS and also Bob Kowalik in the past about uh, diversifying your billing uh, to reflect progression. So I'm going to assume that you heard that message from an us enough times to understand what that means, but that's essentially making sure that, you know, you know, the difference and your, your clinicians know the difference between AMA billing and the eight minute rule, right? With Medicare, um, that you understand the difference between therapeutic exercise and therapeutic activity and you're billing appropriately based on your documentation, right? So that would be the other half is thinking about, uh, schedule and billing efficiency. Anyhow, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to download the, the full report, we'll have a link for it in the show notes where you can download the Ultimate 2023 Profitability Checklist, and you can go through those seven, seven and a half steps and start your practice on the road to profitability. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed recording it for you. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Attention, private practice owners and PT. In today's fast-paced and hyper-competitive world, Private practice owners just like you are achieving extraordinary results. They're adding $10,000, $25,000, or even $150,000 or more each month to their revenue. How are they doing it? They're following a proven step-by-step -step system that we've developed specifically for you. Introducing a new program, Profitability Under Pressure. Hi, this is Chad Madden, physical therapist, practice owner, and educator here with Breakthrough. Now, I know what you might be thinking, $150,000 or more per month, that's a bold promise. And I understand your skepticism, but let me assure you, we have the track record to back it up. Since 2013, we've worked with over 2,000 private practice owners in 12 countries to grow their businesses. We've worked with owners at all stages of practice growth. Some were getting ready to sell and wanted to maximize the value of their practices. Others wanted to grow, open additional locations, and make a bigger impact in their area. Some were content with their practice size and just wanted to focus on maximizing the revenues and profit margins with the square footage and team that they already had in place. And others were just starting out, looking to hit the ground running as quickly as possible. Just listen to the success stories of our clients. Take Joe and Kathy Scarpedo, for example. They more than doubled the value of their practice in less than 12 months and were able to exit and successfully retire to their dream beach home. And that's not all. We have Tony Sear, who has grown his annual revenue by more than $2 million and is on the eve of opening another location. And let's not forget about Deepak Sharma, who grew his practice from scratch to over seven figures in revenue in five years in Edmonton, Alberta, where the average plan of care is barely $400 and rent is more than $60 a square foot. These success stories are not isolated incidents. They're a testament to the power of our proven business systems. But it's not just about eliminating stress and uncertainty. It's about providing you with a plan to systematically improve the profit margins of your practice. Say goodbye to inconsistent growth and financial headaches. With profitability under pressure, you'll learn how to create a sound financial plan for your unique practice. We'll also help you implement systems to improve your profit margins by methodically marching through seven key areas in your practice so you can grow, 
get consistent and leave a bigger impact in your area. And for those of you who already have a seven or eight figure practice, we'll focus on expanding your revenue streams with cash pay services, improving your payer mix and optimizing your team's performance. As a bonus, we'll show you how to attract, hire and incentivize your growing team, regardless of what's happening in the job market. You're not just getting any program teaching you outdated ivory tower concepts you can't apply in today's market. You're getting a proven in the trenches system that has helped thousands of private practice owners just like you achieve remarkable success. Are you ready to take your practice to the next level? Are you tired of doing the same things over and over, expecting different results? The choice is yours. Join the ranks of successful private practice owners who've unlocked financial freedom with our proven strategies. Say goodbye to razor thin margins, inconsistent practice growth, and feeling desperate when thinking about growing your team. Say hello to a prosperous practice that allows you to spend more time with your family, give back to your community, and make a real difference in people's lives. To start your journey to success, click the button below to apply to profitability under pressure. This is for private practice owners only. This program is not for HOPS or POPS practices. Once you apply, this will take you about three minutes. You'll schedule a profitability review with our team to make sure the course is right for you and that you're a good owner to be in the course. We genuinely want to determine if we're the right fit for each other. No matter the outcome, you'll walk away with valuable insights into your practice and how to overcome its challenges. So don't wait any longer. Click the button below and let's get started on this journey to profitability together. Remember to visit getbreakthrough.com to access our free resource library designed specifically for private practice growth. While you're there, make sure you register for a complimentary growth assessment to learn about potential opportunities for growth in your local market. Again, thank you for tuning into the Grow Your Practice podcast and supporting our mission to help people in pain get back to normal naturally.